And now for a slight change of pace, I'm very pleased to be joined by Arjun Jaya. I'm CEO and founder of Baton Systems. Arjun, welcome back to the show. Um, very exciting to have you here. It's been a great show so far. And what we thought we might talk about here, the two of us, was around success and the measurement of success. Uh, the bulk of this conversation, I think we want to put aside for how our customers feel success and how we try to deliver that success and how they report it back to us. But just before that, um, I thought it might be helpful for the audience if you reflected on the evolution of Baton Systems and some of those elements of key success that you felt over the last four years since you founded the company, uh, just highlighting some of the, the areas that you found really exciting. Absolutely, and great to be back on the show. You know, when we started the company, we focused a lot on our core value systems and also on our priorities. You know, our core value systems is very quickly, it is integrity, trust, and hard work. But the thing that also we talk about the core priorities of the company, we made sure from day one that the customer is number one. And we truly mean this. It's not just a talking point. It's, we truly mean that the success of our customer is a success of that. If you're vested in that, we get a better product. We are able to realize better values and therefore that that will turn to into, into gains for the company as well. The, the second one on that is our employees and their families because again, it's just a startup. This is about, about our people. And the third one is about our investors who have trusted us in, in our journey. Now I want to come back to the customer part of the of our of of our core priorities. You know, making sure that this is the product that you're building actually solves the problem of the customer. And, and for that, you have to understand a day in the life of a customer. In a large global organizations, there are multiple stakeholders. There is, a, there is the operations team that is, that is sitting in front of their, their desk every day, trying to move millions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars. The second one is the people in the risk team. The third one are the people in the, in the treasury desks. And lastly, you want a system that is, that is technically very sound, highly reliable, highly secure. We've been very happy that we've made progress in all of them. You know, making sure just tying our success back into the success of the customer. And the most important thing is listening to their problems and understanding their problems at a very, very core. And able to integrate into their core system so that you can start realizing values on that. Also very happy with the team, with the, with the, with the team that we've, that we've grown and also you know, very humbled with the addition of very uh, well-known people in the industry, such as Chairman Chris Giancarlo and, and Jerome Kemp on, on our advisory team. Um, you know, that, that's an important part of our journey. The next one that you people don't probably, our customers probably don't see, is the amount of resilience that we have built around the information security in our SOC 2 audits, making sure that it's, it's reliable, it is actually confirming to the SLAs. When we say it is 99.99% available, it actually is. We have actually made sure that it's got the disaster recovery and the business continuity plans. Growing up our, our, our uh, information security team and our support team to be able to truly provide a 24 hour, you know, six days a week global support. I'm very happy with this and uh, everybody at Bataan is very excited when the customer achieves this success. Yeah, those are great measures of success, I guess, that you've articulated there. And they're probably, you know, to be honest, they're not visible always, are they, to the outside world? So I think it's quite helpful that you've, that you've um, managed to articulate those. I think that's great. Let's move on now to the, to the main topic of conversation, which is really about the, the, the success that our customers derive uh, the feedback that we get from those customers, you know, one of the ones that I want to just throw out there when I first joined the firm was uh, was the report from one of our customers that they'd managed to generate a really material increase in the net interest income that they earn on the collateral posted to one of the big CCPs. You know, a really significant economic gain that, that had been manifested and, and resulted from, uh, from using our technology. Arjun, do you want to build on that and any of the other ones that you've heard about? Absolutely. You know, we looked at this this problem. I broadly classify the problem as as three phases. You know, one is anything that you can do in real time visibilities and real time control is going to be a tremendous value. Uh, and and having real time visibilities means that you need to connect up to a, as many locations. Uh, it could be include your CCPs, include your custody banks to be able to to have real time visibilities of what you have assets at the at the, at the, at the various like locations. And the next one is to bring in the controls and, and the control on, on, on the movement of that asset. And for that, we are very happy about the, the processes that we've built around the simultaneous synchronization and orchestration of asset movement. Process that used to take 24 to 48 hours, if you can shrink that to three minutes, which we have consistently shown, we can do this within the framework and within the systems that, that operate today, to be able to shrink that to, to three minutes. 
it brings significant value for for uh, for all our customers. How you measure that is going to be slightly different for, from a bank to bank, but to be able to consistently go and do that is yeah. is been very very important. Absolutely, and and you know just to cut you you've 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 mentioned some very important things. A couple of the other sort of key metrics that have been mentioned to me. Um, you know, one of our customers spoke to us about a 25% reduction in their post-trade costs. That was in the FX space. Um, somebody else spoke about a 70% increase in their capacity uh, because of the sort of operational process and consistency and workflow. And then Arjun, recently, you know, we've spoken uh, on the previous show as well about the 90-day methodology. Recently, I thought it was fascinating to have um, a, a new customer uh, go through that 90-day methodology, consume its own transactions into our platform, be able to measure what impact that it would have, and come up with a tremendously compelling business case uh, for the implementation of the Baton system, which is a process that we're going through now. I thought that was a that for me was real success to see to see that happen. Um, but it's not just, I guess, is it about the end result? It's all about the, the way they get there. And I think, Arjun, we're always very proud, aren't we, about the the fact that it's not rip and replace, and that we can implement in a in a in a sort of reasonably short space of time. Absolutely, this is an area that I'm very passionate about. You've heard me speak about this, and probably go off uh, for many minutes uh, talking about this. To be able to integrate, first, to be able to understand the problems in a bank is not easy. It's a global organization. It's multiple jurisdictions, multiple legal entities with, within within a, within one bank. And now you talk about interbank settlements or inter entity inter settlements outside the boundaries of, of of a bank. Now you get into distributed workflows. You're getting into different asset classes that have to be synchronized and orchestrated. And all along the way, you know, look at what status quo is. The status quo is paying out one side and hoping that the other side will come in at some point in time in the future outside of outside of certain organizations and and aside from that if i can interrupt it's also about funding on the basis that you have no idea when that when they, when the opposite side is going to come in absolutely i mean now now imagine you now take a take a step back and see from first principles what has happened in status quo you do not have visibilities real time visibilities into your liquidity positions Therefore, there is, and, and also during the process of settlements, there is a risk element that is, that is there. So people think of this just as an operational savings or a technology savings and all that stuff. While that is there, it is very important to understand that you are integrating into the core systems of a bank. You're actually fitting in with the existing rules and the existing operating rules and providing better visibility and better control. To be able to go in and say, you know, just turn on a few knobs on your side and suddenly you have all the data that's coming in. You're able to get your exposures, your obligations in real time, and now you can program the movement of assets, simultaneous movement of assets, whether it's payment versus payment, delivery versus payment, or payment upon payment, a whole series of payment strategies for enabling net set safe settlements. And that has resulted in tremendous savings for a bank and, and, and very positive ROIs in matter of months. Yeah. Yeah, so so running running out of time a bit, I just want to mention you know one of the comments that uh, one of our favorite customers makes to us sometimes, he calls it transparency, workflow, and auditability, and I think that's a tremendous sort of message, um, a measure of success, I guess, if we're able to deliver that. Um, if we then think about delivering that, whilst I think allowing the banks to retain their efforts, their technology efforts on on their core banking solutions on, on risk and control and on, on those aspects, rather than spending money on plumbing, rather than spending their resources on plumbing, then I think we feel we've done our job well, don't we? Um, I think that's important. Let's move on. Final part of this conversation, Arjun, the future. What does success look like in the future, do you think? Thank you again. This is, this is a very important uh, thing to understand. You know, we have solved problems within 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 one bank we've solved our problems with across banks as well uh, able to do true payment versus payment across banks we would be the first ones to be able to do this this is easier said than done you have to integrate with existing systems move real money sitting in real bank accounts and it has to happen with settlement finality Bataan has done this already we have settlement finality with some of the best payment lawyers in the world to be able to say that when assets move, it is final, it's irreversible, it has got auditability all along the process, um, and it has it has got non-repudiation associated with that, and it will stand up across jurisdictions. Now, in terms of scaling up this one, while we have demonstrated that this is this we can do this at scale across banks, we are very excited about in the in the future where we can look to an FMI to come in and and be the administrator and the main operator of the platform. We're very excited about, about, about that piece because 
you know, when you're moving trillions of dollars of asset settlements every day, you need to make sure that you know the, the operating rules is not just a legal document, that there is somebody who's actually gonna be the administrator, somebody that there is a trust infrastructure or a trust structure that is already built into that. So we're excited about this. We are looking forward to you know making some major announcements in this front in a, in a matter of months. Again, this is working this across banks is, is not easy. To be able to do this in a legal framework is, is not easy. We have done this. We want to bring in more participants to make sure that this will actually scale. We are looking at having, you know, hopefully fast forward five years, over a thousand participants to be able to settle any asset class. That is, that is, you can do payment versus payment of, of currencies, delivery versus payment of securities versus currencies, payment upon payment, a whole series of things that we can that we can uh, bring value to the to the marketplace. And it's very interesting to to hear our customers articulate our value propositions slightly better than us. I mean, uh, the transparency, workflow, and auditability, we love it when, when our customers are, a, are, are able to articulate what we bring to the marketplace better than we are. I think that's right. I think true success is when your customers come up with your own marketing tags. Um, but Arjun, hey, listen, it's been great to talk. Thank you for those insights. A great pleasure. Thank you again.